Good evening, everyone. This is Gary Bennett. Welcome to Objective C for Absolute Beginners. Tonight, we're going to be talking about introduction to iCloud, which is new in iOS 5. And uh, we're going to be covering just some of the highlights and how to get started, how to get your app ready um, for iCloud, what it is and what you can do, and more importantly, what you can't do with it. Because a um, little bit different than maybe what it was uh, initially sold to as the developers. Um, uh, when it was introduced at uh, Worldwide Development Conference in 2011. Um, for those that are uh, new, if you would like to attend live and watch any of the YouTube videos, just go to my site at excelme.com and click on the free go to webinar uh, or free uh, video uh, link at the very top right, and uh, you can watch live and recorded sessions. Go here. You can join the uh, the webinars and ask questions on this chapter that I'm talking about or any other chapter in the book. And tonight's maybe just a little bit off of what we're normally talking about in the book because I had a few students ask about talking about iCloud, so I did. And uh, but if you'd like to learn more, of course, you can take my courses and I cover all this in much more depth with applications, etc. All right, so iCloud. iCloud is new in iOS 5. It allows us to keep our information on multiple devices exactly where we left off in, uh, in the application. And so you'll hear um, the truth is in the cloud. So if I'm working on a document on my iPad that is iCloud enabled, that document exactly where I left off will show up on my other iOS devices when I'm using that application. So it remembers exactly what I was typing in that document and where I left off in that document, but only on iOS devices. iCloud does not work on your Mac right now. So let's say you have a Keynote document, which is iCloud enabled, it's made by Apple. And if I open it up on my iPad and make a new document in Keynote, um, it will, on my iPhone, put that document, the next time I open up Keynote, it will put that document, um, copy it over, and um, allow me to start typing exactly where I left off with my iPad Keynote document. Keynote also runs on the Mac, but doesn't work right now with it. Um, it is a common set of API libraries that allows us to basically do all this stuff. We don't have to do much coding, but what we have to do is set up our application on the um, iTunes portal, uh, provisioning portal, um, specifically for this. Now, um, as you probably know, when you synchronize your device um, to the cloud in general or to your Mac, Everything that's stored in the document section under your app gets copied automatically. So if you don't want things backed up and, and hammer the user's um, um, data, um, um, their data plan, you know, don't store things in documents, Apple basically says. Store it in temp or make another folder that doesn't store this in. Um, one thing you have to remember, like all iPhone and iPad apps is they're in a sandbox, meaning that other applications cannot access your app and nor can you access other 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 applications um, data. Um, it's not possible. So the document that you make in uh, your application cannot be read by somebody else's application and vice versa. All right. Um, all this happens in the background in updating and notifying when there's been updates to your document so that all the other apps that um, own your document um, on these different devices um, stay in sync. All that kind of happens behind the scenes magically. Um, in order to test, you need two iOS 5 devices. You can't test your cloud um, your, your cloud uh, synchronization and the whole thing working in the simulator. It's got to be done on your devices, on your iPad, your iPhone, Touches, or hopefully Apple TV here soon um, by the end of the year. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to go start off with the provisioning profile in um, your iTunes iOS Development Center. 
So what you want to do is after you log in, click on this iOS provisioning portal. And when you're making your provisioning pro uh, profile for your device, you'll want to go here where it says app IDs. And under when you create your new app ID, which you have to do for all apps, um, so that you can push it down to your device or upload it to the um, iTunes Connect Apple Store where you make your money for your app, um, you're going to want, want to obviously name your app ID and um, your the name of your app that's going to go um, in the uh, in your bundle identifier. And then what you're going to see when you do this, when you make your app ID, is the app name and you're going to see you know, some things that are by default set. In app purchases, game setter, game setting, game center setting, and then the iTunes um, or iCloud setting. By default, iCloud is turned off because, like I said, they don't want you to unnecessarily hammer a data somebody's data plan if they're not using it, and if you don't need to use it. So, if you need to turn it on, and if you're going to have iCloud feature in your application click on configure. Once you click on configure, you're going to be able to click on enable for iCloud. Okay, when you enable for iCloud, now, sorry, I keep thinking I can hit done here, but I got hit next. Um, it's going to come up and saying um, your uh, provisioning profile is now associated for iCloud and um, you must download, re-download your provisioning profile for your app to have this feature now. Once you, once you re-download uh, the provisioning profile like you normally do, your app will be uh, have the ability to do the iCloud piece. Now, there is some code that you're going to have to do. I'm going to cover part of that code tonight. I only have a f 10 minutes here on, uh, on YouTube, but I'm going to go through a good chunk of it tonight, and the rest I cover in the classes or you can pick up elsewhere. Um, you're going to go ahead and want to um, download and put your provisioning profile in, set up your app and, and your uh, company identifier that you uh, made in, uh, um, with your provisioning profile. <clears throat> and then under your settings, you'll scroll down. It's kind of, uh, sorry, I scrolled on my mouse instead of scrolling down here. Um, you're going to want to scroll down to the bottom in your settings when you make your app. And you'll want to click on Enable Entitlements. And you'll want to copy those settings that you made in your provisioning profile. Okay, the same settings that you made there. So whatever you made there, you want to copy here. All right? Very important. Now, before you get too heavily involved in the coding, and here's you can read here on what each one of those settings mean. They're pretty self-explanatory, but I'd... Just did a quick little write up there for it. And you can pause it if you're watching YouTube. But what you want to, in your app delegate, very first thing in your app delegate where your program begins to execute, you'll want to put this code in to make sure that your application runs and has iCloud installed correctly. Because I have found that sometimes you'll miss a setting or it's not compiling right because sometimes Xcode doesn't see everything correctly and you're like, why isn't my iCloud synchronization happening right? Well, put this code in here and run it on your device hooked up to your simulator and you'll see, I mean, hooked up to your debugger in Xcode and so you can see the output going to your output console, your debug console in Xcode and you can see if this code gets executed correctly. So you can see if iCloud Access is working or if it's not. This line of code will check that. And you should always have this in there because if this comes back as false for some reason and in your code you're doing things with the iCloud API, you can cause instability in your application. And nobody wants that. So right here you can determine in your code and logic going forward if that is going to work. All right, um, those of you that are attending live, I'll take questions here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and conclude the recording for those that are listening on YouTube. Again, 
If you'd like to learn more about iCloud or any of my other courses, just go to excelme.com. Uh, the courses are all there. Love to have you. They're, um, they're twice a week, typically Monday and Wednesday, and they're also recorded um, at the same time. So you can go at your own pace, and they're available anytime. And, of course, you have access to my email, Skype, and phone number for all the students as well if you have questions. So great having you. I'm going to go ahead and take questions for those that are attending live tonight. And I look forward to seeing you next week, Wednesday nights at 6.30 uh, p.m. Pacific time. Thanks, everybody.